Uh, first of all, I want to say thanks. Uh, thank you very much to Alexandra, to Sofia for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here with you. And I'm, I'm at the same time sad that I cannot be with you uh, in, uh, physically in Athens, but I hope that mm, next time it will be possible. And um, I will talk today, it will be a more philosophical uh, lecture than the uh, others we had before, um, and because I'm, I'm a philosopher and I will focus on uh, the collaboration between Chiida and Heidegger in context of uh, their common artist book, The Art and the Space. And I will focus on the concepts of space, time, place, and void. The German philosopher Martin Heidegger and the Spanish Basque sculptor Eduardo Chiida met for the first time in November 23rd, 1968 at the opening of an exhibition with works by Chigida, which took place at the Art Gallery, Gallery in Erker in the Swiss city St. Gallen. The philosopher was not only interested in Chigida's sculptural work, but also in the artist's thought on space and time. The intellectual affinities which Heidegger felt with Chigida would convince him, as we will see, that the Spanish Basque artist was ideal to cooperate with him in a beautiful project. The artist's book, Die Kunst und der Raum, The Art and the Space, which he was planning. The place where they met first, the Galerie am Erka, had been founded in St. Gallen in 1958 by Franz Larese and Jörg Janet. When the gallery moved in 1963 to a bigger building, the two directors founded the printing press Erker Presse, together with the third business of the company, the publishing house Erker Verlag, which would publish small books, huge folders with graphic works, and from 1968 on also artists' books in different sizes, where the artists of the gallery collaborated with writers, poets, and philosophers. The material production of the books took place in the printing press of the Erka Presse. In its ateliers, the artists created the graphic part, which corresponded to the book, while the authors of the written part traced their texts in their own handwriting in lithographical stones, as Heidegger would do it in 1969 with his text, The Art and the Space, the Kunst und der Raum. In the meeting at the gallery in Erka in November 1968, Heidegger proposed to Chigida, as we said before, the idea of the artist's book. The letter accepted immediately, and thus Heidegger worked in the following months on the essay for the book, while Chigida created seven little collage and one lithograph. I know that um, you have a copy of the book there in, in, in where you are uh, having the event, but um, for the rest of the audience, I want to show you uh, the different pages of the book so that you can have an idea how was this um, small sized book in the size it is an anecdote of the notebooks of uh, where Heidegger noted his, his reflections because Chiida uh, suggested to do it in this size. So we see here um, the book, the signing the already uh, finished book. And uh, this is different perspectives, uh, pictures that I took so that one can make, have an idea of how this book is, um, how it is composed. <clears throat> this here we see, <clears throat> sorry, um, the, the handwriting of Heidegger with a little collage and, uh, of, um, by, by Chihira. And there was the other printed, the printed text that, uh, Heidegger's handwriting is really very, very hard to read. I, it costs me a lot and I 
just succeeded it after months of work and together with a grand uh, daughter of Heidegger, <laughs> I managed to to uh, to read something. I, I I read German, but his handwriting is really very beautiful, but very hard to to read. Here we have some samples. This is the first uh, page of the book with a little collage, and the next pages with this beautiful little collage by Chilida. We will see after how uh, the void and the place um, will enter in, in this um, cosmos, uh, Chilidian and also Heide, Heideggerian cosmos. So I just uh, show you these pages and this is uh, the last. Okay. The philosophical question which Heidegger wanted to approach in his essay concerns space. In particular, space linked to time in connection with art. It's worth pointing out that Heidegger understands space generally as something active and temporal. Accordingly, he says that space, spaces, Einräumen in German, which means something like uh, that it spreads out and leaves free, which is why it has a fundamental importance for human life in Heidegger's view. According to the philosopher, human existence, which Heidegger calls in German always Dasein, not existence, which is, comes from Latin, Dasein is always essentially open. Dasein means in German literary, literally being there. This being there, which is open for whatever, has evidently, has evidently a spatial na nature. The fact that human Dasein is essentially open, that human existence is essentially open, however, does not only mean that the condition of human existence and of its liberty consists in being open for, but also that human being has to find his or her place on earth. So in Heidegger's view, space is not given in advance, but has to be looked for, has to be shaped and kept open in order to find one's place. With this sense of space, Heidegger refers to the Aristotelian, Aristotelian concept of topos and chora. Such a concept of space as Heidegger's open dynamic notion cannot be enclosed in a conclusive conception. It has rather to manifest itself in the activity of an open thought, which implies a profound experience. But how may we achieve this experience? Like Heidegger, Chigida opposed to the abstract concept of natural science, when he conceived space as something alive, inseparable from time and from human being, something which is not simply given, but a secret, that is, something unknown, as Mikkel already pointed also out, something unknown, which one has to look for and experience. Both the philosopher and the artist not only shared their interest in the same problem, they also shared the way they were dealing with this problem. For both, the only possible way to do it was asking and searching. Starting from these premises, Heidegger had some expectations regarding art as he hoped to find certain artistic manifestations which would provide a deep, that is, a true experience of space and time. These are all pictures I have took in different um, public spaces um, from uh, Chihida sculptures. You have already seen this is Windcomb, as you know.
The philosopher had the intuition that art has at least in principle the potential to enable an experience of space in connection with time. And he expected that this experience could help to feel the true place of human being and of life on earth, a place which would be inseparable from things, that is from a true being with the things, and thus from a true dwell, in German wohnen, a true dwell on earth. Precisely this was what Heidegger felt in Chigida's work and artistic thought, as he realized that Chigida's artworks invited to be there, that is, not only to be together with them, with the sculptures, and to contemplate them, but also to be inside, to be outside, to be around with them, and starting from then also with the things of its environment so that you can have an experience, a little, uh, at least experience. I will show you several uh, slides and um, pictures I took from this wonderful um, sculpture meeting place in, in Madrid. It's one of the different meeting places, uh, sculptures that Chida did, and three uh, are in, 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 in Madrid. This is one of them. And let us go around and make this sculpture alive. You will see that after I will go back to this um, making alive and to have this experience with and uh, there where the uh, sculpture is, with the sculpture and from this sculpture. You see all the different faces, not only perspectives, but different possibilities which are in one sculpture, which is at the same time, multiple sculptures. Okay, let's uh, keep this. As, as we have seen, the experience of being there, which Chigida's works enable, is obviously not static. On the contrary, it implies a profound open space-time experience it requires a constant movement, which opens up to always new experiences, as true dwell does. That is, a dwell which grants human being a place in the world. In the following, I will present Chigida's concepts, questions, and inspired Heidegger and which left important traces in his essay, The Art and the Space. The concepts which I will expose in relation with Chihida's conceptions, especially void and place, however, were not new for Heidegger. On the contrary, but precisely for this reason, as Heidegger recognized in Chihida, uh, for this reason, as Heidegger to recognize in Chihida a proximity to his own ideas, he adopted and incorporated them in his own thought so that he could take a further step in his own inquiry on space, a space which, as we have pointed out, confers human being an essential freedom to openness. According to Heidegger, it is impossible to understand the relationship between space and art without taking into account place and together with place, the environment, which Heidegger calls in German, Gegend. However, if one wants to understand the way how art and space interact, one has not just to consider place, but rather experience of place. Experience, in German, Erfahrung, Experientia, Experience is something which is attained in motion. This is on the way. Being on the way means being open to the world, diving into this uncertain and opening oneself to whatever will come. It implies a constant moving away 
and removing and thus a reversal of remoteness and closeness. Let me show you now some different um, yeah, perspectives or the better said, uh, this is a wonderful sculpture I really love very much, the Monumento a la Tolerancia, Monument to Tolerance in Sevilla, in Sevilla in this, um, you know, I know fifth anniversary of the so-called discovery of America um, <clears throat> in 1992. It was inaugurated there and shall us uh, make this uh, surrounding, this experience on the way with and together with and there with the uh, sculpture. Inside, outside, and around. Closing, opening, closing, opening, closing, opening. However, if the notion of place is connected with an open experience to the unknown, as Heidegger suggests, then it seems that place is necessarily something aerial, like the air. Does this mean that place doesn't exist? That is, that they are places are lost in the void which divorce them? Let us, let us go back to the interplay between art and space and see if the experience of this interplay can give us the gift of a place. Let's contemplate for that purpose the space-time experience to which Chigida's sculpture invite. I have already showed you some examples. What does the artist suggest us? According to him, this sculpture should be, and it's a quote by Chihida, should be attentive to all which moves around it. As we have seen, let me see. Okay. He affirms further that what moves around the sculpture makes it alive. Let's see the whole passage that Chihida writes down in his notebook. I quote Chihida. Everything that rotates is round around. He says, redondo alrededor. Round around it independently from the form of what rotates. You have access to the sculpture from this field of round around, redondo alrededor. There is no other possibility. The sculpture has always to show its face and to be attentive to all what moves around it. Okay. Chihida reminds us on one side that one cannot make sculpture alive if one does not get moving. That is, if one does not contemplate the work from all possible places, places that may be in connection with it. And this implies surrounding it, as we have seen, completely. Thus, on the way which performs countless places from where one may access the sculpture, one starts experiencing the work. And through this experience, one achieves to be with the sculpture. Heidegger would say one inhabits it, wohnen. Habitar, one inhabits it. This, the dwell which takes place, is the other sense of Chihida's assertion. So, in order to make a sculpture alive, we need both motion and dwell. Now, being with the sculpture, inhabiting it, means at the same time putting oneself in its place. Thus, one opens up with it, that is, from its own place to all, as Chida says, which moves around. With the words of Heidegger, 
This means that an environment, Gigant, opens up, where one is going to find places which enter into dialogue with the sculpture and thus with its own place. Whilst opening and entering into dialogue with all what is there around, the sculpture place becomes alive. At the same time, this dialogue of the sculpture place makes all places connect to each other. Thus, the places which arise with the things in the environment become alive too, just as it occurred with the thing that is the sculpture. We have seen that entering an interplay with space and thus with time, the sculpture donates an experience which finally makes arise a place the place which is the sculpture itself. The experience of this place allows likewise to find other places that open up in the environment around the sculpture. Thus, the sculpture becomes a meeting place, lugar de encuentros. Meeting place, lugar de encuentros, is precisely the title of one of Gida's sculptures which were shown in the spring of 1969 in the artist's big exhibition at the Museum Kunsthaus Zürich in Switzerland, an exhibition which Heidegger visited in 1969 with great interest together with Chiyida, as we will see subsequently. Adopting Chiyida's idea of the sculpture as the meeting place which donates lots of places together with the things experienced with and from the sculpture, Heidegger proposes in the art and the space in his essay. I quote Heidegger, the sculpture would be an embodying, he says, Verkörperung, an embodying of places which opening an environment and keeping it open bring together around them something that is free, that grants the particular things a stay and the human being a dwell among the things." End of quote. Taking up Heidegger's reflections, we can emphasize that art, and especially sculpture, which works with art, enables staying and dwell because it possesses the power of uh, to embody places, to give them a body, the places, which otherwise would, would vanish and get lost in the void as they are linked to an experience of the uncertain. But how occurs what Heidegger calls the bodying of a place, this process by which a place becomes a body, becomes material? Um, let us see this. Where comes the place from? Where is it before it gets a body? However, isn't that an absurd question? No place can be in a place before it is a place. Indeed, one cannot say that a place is actually somewhere before it is a place. But probably we could sustain that as long it is nowhere, it has a potential being. Now, the potency that houses the possibility of a place is nothing less than the void. However, the void, which has the potency to generate places, is not nothing. It rather has a being. But how and when does it generate plates, places? Heidegger sustains that it does so when it plays within the artwork. That is, when it becomes a sculpturing embodying. In the art and the space, he claims the following. I quote Heidegger. The void is not nothing, neither is it a fraud. The void plays in the sculptural embodying in such a way that it donates places by searching and drafting. End of quote. A void which plays 
and by doing so, searches, drafts, and donates places, obviously cannot be avoided as classical physics conceive it, which identifies it with an homogeneous and rigid space, a continuum of fixed sites or points whose only function is to establish the separation between bodies and to make distances measurable. In Heidegger's essay for the artist's book, Void gets at great importance with the new meaning of the donation of places. This meaning grew it certainly upon ideas which Heidegger already had in mind. In former writings, Heidegger conceived void as something which grounds on what is free and makes possible giving and at the same time receiving. But the new meaning which Heidegger gives to the void in his essay, where he relates it with the donation of places, owes a lot from the intense study of Chiquita's work and artistic thought, as well as from the conversations he maintained with the artists. This becomes evident if one considers the notes on space which Heidegger requested from Chiquita and which he received in a letter from the artist. As well as if one takes into account some significant titles of works of Chiquita's exhibition in Zurich, which Heidegger visited in 1969, as I said before, together with the artist. Let's now have a look on some of these works of that exhibition of 1969 in Zürich. The most important, the biggest work of the Zürich exhibition was Alrededor del Vacío, Cuatro, Around the Void, Four, Number Four, an iron sculpture which had a big, you see a huge Aryan sculpture of 180 uh, plus 380 and 170 centimeters, which had been brought from the Art Museum of Basel. This huge sculpture attracted much attention. In the context of our reflections on void, it is also interesting to mention two other works titled Modulación, uh, modulación del espacio, uh, one and two, space modulation, one and two, we will see after an, um, a picture of them, and as well as three works titled Rumor de Limites, Rumor of Limits. Here you see one uh, in the exhibition uh, um, were shown the number one, the number two, and the number four of these um, variations of the rumor of limits by Tejida. Heidegger was with no doubt interested in these works, not only because of their interplay with space, but also because of their titles. As I will show next, these titles add a new dimension to the reflections we have referred to before. Let's recall what we said about the interplay between the artwork and space an interplay that arises when a beholder makes a real experience of the sculpture, converting it in a place. Chiquita points out that one has to surround the whole sculpture in order to experience its spatiality and make it alive. When doing so occurs, as we have seen, what Chiquita calls round around, redondo alrededor, a title which Chida gives to several of his early works. As we have seen, multiple meetings emerge when we walk around the sculpture and put ourselves in the place of the work. This is how occurs the embodying of places, as Heidegger calls it. According to Chida, the meetings and places which emerge on the way owe their existence to the, what he calls, modulation of space, which produ produces a rumor of limits. The expressions modulation of space and rumor of limits, which constitute significant titles, as we see here, of several of his artworks, which were exposed in Zürich, exhibited in Zürich, these expressions point to a process uh, which can only be indicated metaphorically. What Jida expects is something astonishing. He expects 
space to become palpable. How? In his view, space is something absolutely fast and fleeting, like a music, which is, however, inaudible because of its tremendous velocity. But Chigida thinks that it is possible to slow down space by creating limits. Thus, space will become palpable. If suitable limits delay its speed and make sound the fleeting tones, even though only a rumor will come out. Similarly, the experience of motion, which performs the round around, gives rise to a place. Now, if this is true, there has to be a void charged with a begetter force. It's the void which contains potential places, a void which is full thanks to its intrinsic force. Thus, to perform the motion around the void and to offer limits, as Chida suggests and strives for, means to stimulate, stimulate its begetter force, the begetter force of the void. In several notes, which Heidegger made after his conversations with Shigida, one detects clearly the philosopher's interest in understanding with the help of Shigida's works and reflections, the begetter void where space interplays with the sculpture. Heidegger points out that one should not conceive Shigida's works as a representation of something. One should rather contemplate them as a form which encloses or surrounds space, an expression which underlines the importance Chida gave to the round around of the uh, sculpture. There is no doubt that Heidegger received much inspiration by Chida's work and that he studied with great interest the artist's ideas and reflection on space, time, place, and void. But it is also important to emphasize the precision and originality with which the philosopher took up Chiyida's ideas. Heidegger recognized an important ontological relationship between place and void, which is only implicit in Chiyida's thought. This insight allowed him to take a further step concerning the ontological importance of the interplay between art and space. <clears throat> now I'm finishing. At the end of his essay, Heidegger suggests that even if art has the power to give truth a place, it is not the only way how truth can occur. Truth does not require necessarily a body or a thing, not even an artwork. It can float in the spirit, in the air, in the void, and we could add in the word. Thus, Heidegger ends his reflections with the following quote by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. It is not always necessary for the truth to embody itself. It is already enough if it floats around in a spirit producing concordance, if it waves seriously, gently, like the sound of a bell through the air. Es ist nicht immer nötig, dass das Wahre sich verkörpere. Schon genug, wenn es geistig umherschwebt, und die Übereinstimmung bewirkt, wenn es wie Glockenton ernstfreundlich durch die Lüfte wogt. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. We need to thank Mrs. Rabe for taking the time to talk to us from Colombia. We are so ever so grateful for your time and your incredibly enlightening lectures. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm very welcome. I'm very happy to be with you and, and yeah, to share this time and this experience with you, even if I'm so far away. But in my heart, I'm there too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Okay, so there will be no, no question, no discussion? Ah, do you? No, uh, I, I, I asked, I don't know. No, 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 it's time for us to, to give a little time to Ana Maria and see if we have any questions for her. Does anybody want to ask Mrs. Rabe? 
I don't want to complain. It's not a question, it's more than thank you very much, Ana Maria. It's always uh, wonderful to hear you. And I think it's an opportunity to understand. Now I, I, I'm going to present and to talk about public uh, sculptures. And I think that you have explained uh, splendidly uh, and wonderfully the, the way that uh, to understand uh, this connection between the space, the void, and this const construction. So uh, for me, it's always a pleasure to, to listen to you. And, and maybe before the, the, your conversation, your, your, your uh, yes, um, we were talking about the, the way how you went to do visited uh, Switzerland and you visited the archives of Heidelberg and maybe you, you, you could explain a little bit about this because I, I think that it's wonderful. Uh, all this uh, st story with, with, uh, with the archives of the philosopher. Maybe you want to share with us these moments. Thank you, Nausika. I don't see you, but I, I hear your voice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, sure. It was really, it was an adventure. I, I had no time to tell all this uh, a long story. The thing is that um, it was in 2014, right? Uh, Nausika, I was in, in Gila, in, in San Sebastian, and was... Um, um, with an um, invitation of the Teida's family, I, I could um, make some inquiries and investigation in the library uh, of by Teida because I was very much interested in this collaboration, the intellectual in exchange. As Ignacio Teida is one of his uh, elder sons of Teida's sons, uh, gave me a letter. Uh, it was dated from January 1969. This was by Larese, one of this, both a, a gallerist, who wrote to Chiyida that he said to him, they, um, Chiyida and uh, Heidegger had met two months before, in November 68, right? And in two months after, in January, Larese writes to Chiyida that uh, Heidegger has, had not finished, not yet. His, his, he was working in his uh, text, which was very interesting for me for the following, because in the post data, Larisa, Larisa says to Chiida that Heidegger asked Chiida to send him all what he had written on space. So, and um, Chiida in, in some uh, interviews and in some notes, it makes reference to this collaboration that Heidegger was very, very much interested, in, not only interested in the conversations, but he wanted to read because uh, what Chiida wrote, uh, Chiida was not only a wonderful, as you know, <laughs> sculptor and artist and, and, and graphic artist also, but also a really wonderful writer. He wrote it um, like aphorisms or like haikus, uh, poems, right? Full of philosophical and poetical sense on, on space, on time and everything. So, and uh, Heidegger knew that in, in that conversation with Chiida that he was writing. So he wanted him to send him. And it was not, it, it, there is, was no study, no publication of this note. So I uh, decided to, to travel around. <laughs> I had then, and I was already in Colombia in, in 1914 after my visit in Chihideleco and San Sebastian and so on and the archive. I moved to Chile, uh, to, um, to Colombia and then I, I had a research a project with, which allowed me to travel to several places, not only to St. Gallen, to the archive, but also to, to Meskirch and to Marbach Literaturarchiv. And finally, I found there not the selection of, first, not the selection of Chiyida's writings, but something that was more astonishing even, it was a, a translation to German that Heidegger himself made from the notes of Chiyida he had received. So this was, and then it's a large, a, a long, long story. I found it was really, I felt like a detective <laughs> and to do it with Chiyida and Heidegger, this was really for me a gift. And yes, and finally I could, I could really investigate much better um, uh, what exactly, what notions and what concepts could have influenced and um, touched uh, Heidegger and be important for his thought. So this, what I have presented you in, in a longer version is published in, in Spanish, in a Spanish uh, journal. Thank you for, 
for giving me the chance to uh, to explain it a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you so much. Does anybody have any other questions? Alexandra, don't you have a question? No. <laughs> Everybody is so shy. I don't know. I don't know why. No one. Okay. <laughs> Well, then that's it. We are very, very happy because. Ah, oh, yes. I spare. Sorry, uh, we don't know each other, but I listening to you, I was wondering if uh, among the readings you were uh, mentioning both uh, had been working on uh, Heidegger and Chigida. Did anyone work with Henri Lefebvre? Uh, Henri Lefebvre? Lefebvre. Lefebvre. On, on Chihida and Lefebvre or Heidegger? Oh, Lefebvre? Uh, no, no, no. Henri Lefebvre was, uh, wrote uh, La Production Sociale de l'Espace. At the end of the 60s, uh, he was yes. working on this. So I was wondering if any of them had uh, read his uh, works. Anyone, Chihida or Heidegger? Yes. I mean? Yes. I, I guess Heidegger probably. Chida, I, I was, uh, as I, I told you, I, I made an investigation of his libraries because I was very much interested what philosophers, poets, and so on he was reading. And I found lots of, um, you know, notes and, and underlines. I don't remember a book by Lefebvre, but it can be. It's it probably. It's probably because Chida was a, a great reader. He had lots lots of important books and also philosophical books so i don't remember i have to check it but i i don't know but it's probably <laughs> thank you that's okay anyone else no i think that's it thank you so much again thank you. you were very unique truly <laughs> we are very honored we're so very honored we believe that this is a very, very a unique, totally unique thing that we have done here. So thank you so much. But just for, to finish, I wanted to show you this. This uh, what you see in the back is an homage. Uh, probably I can show it a like, little bit better. I don't know. You see it? Yes. No, no, we are not seeing it. Yes. No, no. Yes. Now you are seeing it. Yes, thank you. Ah, there you go. Ah, even better, yes. Yes, this is um, the first homage that Chiyida made to Heidegger. It's homage to Heidegger in 72. He made several graphic, but also a sculpture, which is in, in Frankfurt. I only just wanted to, to show it to you in honor to this collaboration between Chiyida and Heidegger. Thank you very much again for the invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.